worship you today. We praise you this morning. We worship you this morning and we give you all that we have and all that we need. We know we rest in you, God. I lift my hands to you and give you glory. I lift my heart to you and give you praise. I give my life to you, for you gave your life to me. I lift my heart to you, for you gave your life to me. 
for you are holy. I lift my heart to you, for you are good. And now by faith I make this covenant decree. This is what I believe. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe his word is life. I believe that he is God incarnate. I believe he is the way. I believe the cross, the grave. The place of rest where he is laid is empty now. It's empty now. I lift my hands to you, for you are glory. I lift my heart to you. Give you praise. I give my life to you, for you gave your life to me. I lift my hands to you, for you are holy. I lift my heart to you. For you are good And now by faith I make This covenant decree This is what I believe I believe in Jesus Christ I believe his word
worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Come into my heart today and be the Lord of all. I ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody say amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you're here today. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. You may be seated this morning. Thank the Lord, you may be seated this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't want to have to get royal up here to get this thing straightened out. Praise the Lord. In just a few moments, we're going to receive our tithe and offering, but I wanted to want to read something to you. Uh, I'd written this before because I want this to be kind of in the, just in the thoughts of our family. Um, God is doing some wonderful things in our church. I feel like the Lord is establishing uh, us as not just a, a couple of families, but as a community. God's expanding our, our boundaries. He's expand, expanding our borders. And... Um, I, 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 would, I just want to say I'm thankful for the diversity that we have in Family Worship Center. Uh, well, I'll tell you, someone asked me one time about our church. I said, well, it's kind of a Heinz 57. It's got a little bit of everything in it. But it's a beautiful thing that the Lord's doing here. And you can look around. You have Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Pentecostal. You have wealthy not so wealthy, you have black, white, brown, the diversities of our culture bring a uniqueness to who we are as a family, and I think that's very important. 
those differences are powerful. Isn't it amazing how I see couples get married and the first thing they try to do is start changing each other. And that is a horrible thing. God made you the way you are, and the uniqueness of who you are adds to the person that you're joined to, all the things that you're not, they are. And so we're doing this, we're, we're looking at the uniqueness of who we are as a family, and those differences are powerful. In one area, I'm weak. In that area, you're strong. We need one another. So as we work together and we worship together, his blessings rest upon us. The Bible would define our obvious diversities in a very unusual way where the Bible says there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, but all one in Christ. That doesn't remove our diversity. It expresses it in a very unique way. And here's how it works. Jesus is the prism that releases the beauty of our oneness in him like a rainbow, a splash of wonder and of grace. And our diversity, which we should celebrate, does not imply a distinction between us as a value of one above the other. God made you perfect just the way you are. When I was a little child, we used to sing this song. Maybe some of you remember it. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Now, all these years later, I stand with the privilege of declaring that song will best be described in the culture of our church. And there's only one race, and that is the human race. There's only one body, and that is of Christ. And he is the prism. And out of our oneness in Christ, that truly reveals the beauty of our diversity. So, I want, you, I, I, I want you to know that I celebrate you, everyone, just the way you are. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. And with that in mind, I want to recognize that as a, co- as a country, we have set aside certain months for recognition of different cultures and the heritage celebration, cultural uh, heritage celebrations. This coming September is going to be the National Hispanic Heritage Month. This month is Black History Month, and that's very important for us to acknowledge, and it's very important that we celebrate that. The Lord in his wisdom has made a powerful deposit in the African-American community, and I'm very excited to join my hearts and my faith with that. Black History Month is a time to pause for just a moment and to celebrate the treasure, the uniqueness, and the beauty that we all bring to the table of life and worship. I know that many will only see the struggle of the past, and that certainly must be acknowledged. It must be understood. But there's another chapter to that story, and it's not just where the black culture has been, but rather where they are going. Now, I know that there's been a lot of dark days that the enemy has tried to divide because of the differences of color of our skin or history of our culture, but I want to say that that will not define us as a family and as a church, our future is bright. Our hearts are, are, are unified, and we will not be divided. We will not be stopped. We will never stop in our pursuit for freedom. We will never stop in our, in our resistance against those that oppose it. President Ronald Reagan once said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. He said, we didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them to do the same thing, or one day we'll spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was like in the United States when people were free. Freedom ultimately flourishes best when people from diverse backgrounds unite together in common calls to fight for it to defend it, and to protect it. So I want to say to our African-American families and to our here at our church and also our many friends elsewhere that we stand with you, united as one family, united as one voice, expressing ourselves through the prism of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I am so thankful that we are in this family together. Can somebody say amen?
I'm going to, at this time, I'm going to ask Shane if he'd come, and I just want him to give you a scripture concerning our tithing. Please don't forget, now, January, we had, it was our uh, Missions Awareness Month to where we were trying to encourage everyone to give a dollar a day for the year. Because as you give to our missions, I'm just telling you, it, it, it not only makes an impact there, but it makes an impact here. It makes an impact in your life and in your children's lives. And so I'm, I'm just going to ask you to please remember that uh, we are doing this. Jordan and Kay Wing, what are you doing here? <laughs> Hold on just one second. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on just one second. <laughs> It's about time. It's a long way from the house. They drove all the way in from Michigan for this service. So glad you guys are here. But I appreciate Shane. He's got a tremendous word, just an insight into our giving, and this is important. So I just want you to open your heart for just a second. Shane, go ahead. I wish you had given me about 10 more minutes in my seat. Good morning, everyone. You know, there's only about 20 scriptures that you can find about giving offering. And you've probably all heard them a hundred times. So as I was reflecting this, I was thinking about our church and past, <laughs> just past stuff and things. And I started thinking about Pastor McCorkle and I started thinking about how fat, bad I felt um, for him having to be my pastor in the beginning of my life in Christian faith. We've been in this church for probably 32 years, something like that. And about 15 years of that, Pastor McCorkle was our pastor before Pastor Jerry became to be a buffer between us. And um, I appreciate I appreciate what he taught us and what he instilled, and he's been our pastor. You know, for all that time, he was there with us through Gabe's circumstance and situations. But I, I know it had to be tough because I was just really dumb during that time. And I'm not saying I'm, uh, you know, super undumb now, but uh, I, I wasn't stupid. There's a difference, and I'm going to give it to you. The difference is someone who's stupid doesn't know any better. They aren't informed. A dumb person knows better and they know a little bit of the consequences they're going to face, but they just choose to go ahead and do it anyway. And I learned, I was a youth pastor and a college pastor for a number of years, and I definitely understood the difference between those two statements, between someone being dumb and doing dumb stuff and someone being stupid. Kids do dumb stuff all the time. They know what's going to happen and they just choose to do something anyway. But since that time and through the growth and things of heavy consequences in my life, sometimes you decide you just don't want to be where you're at anymore. And the only way to do that is to figure out what got you there and try to do 180 degree difference. So what I've done is every day of my life since then, is I try to spend time with God and get a little bit better each day and a little bit more intelligent because I don't want to make dumb choices. I might make stupid mistakes, but dumb choices are something I don't want to pay consequences for anymore. So one of the things I do is I collect quotes to reflect on. I think through things people have said that are very intelligent, much more educated than myself. And one of the quotes that I, I think about often, it says, emotions are criminals. And they have to be interrogated for the truth. And I, I want you to think about that. Because our emotions fluctuate so fast. And you have to decide, what is true? Is the way you feel right now true or the way you felt 15 minutes ago true? Or the way you'll feel tomorrow, is that true? You know, as Christians, we know the truth. But we also see what's going on around us 
And like many people right now, Kathy and I are feeling a little bit of crunch. Some people are, some people aren't. It just depends on what your business is and what you do. Construction is feeling a little bit of crunch right now. But my emotions really don't change the circumstance and the situation. There's a truth that changes it, but my emotions don't. And I wanted to share this with you real quick. One time we were going through a much similar situation in our life, but it was years ago. And in that situation, I was very frustrated. I was upset. God wasn't answering me the way I expected, when I expected, and how I expected. And I was making very dumb choices with my behavior, my mouth, and my actions. And I'm embarrassed to say one day, literally at the last moment before we had to make a payment on something, and it was dire. We were driving from our, from our driveway, and Kathy stopped. We stopped at the mailbox. Kathy got out. And, you know, this isn't a miraculous check in the mail thing. It's just there was a check there. But the thing that was so overwhelming was the check was sent two days before the need arise. Literally postmarked two days before the need arised, the check was on the way. But because the way I was responding at the time, I couldn't even really appreciate that. It met the need and then a little bit more. But since that time, I don't let my emotions and fears and worries dictate so much in my life to where I make dumb choices. And dumb choices are things that we know to do better and we choose not to do. We know we shouldn't smoke. We know we shouldn't overeat, overdrink, whatever you do. When you do, those things are dumb choices, right? But the other thing is about our giving. And I'm not, you guys are all mature people. I'm not pulling on you, telling you what to do. I'm just saying our giving should not be based on our circumstances. They should be based on the truth. What we know in our heart. And what I know is God always has taken care of me and my family. And it seems like the more I'm open to give to people, it just comes back. And I'm not talking about just giving in the church. I'm talking about being a giver in life. And that's truly, I mean, we do give in tithes and we do give an offering. And that's what our, we should do as a church. But the whole premise of that is to be a giver in life. To where, where you're at, you're not so self-imposed with circumstance and situation that you can't see someone around you that's in tremendous need. But you can be a giver. And I would just challenge you, no matter what's going on in life, no matter the circumstance, interrogate your feelings because they're criminals and they're trying to steal from you. And try to figure out what the truth is. And always always be a giver even to a fault I've heard people say I've got to protect my money and my dad taught me one thing is that you give and let God sort things out one time my dad got a new coat and he came home it was winter, it was work coat and he got a new coat and he came home and my mom was like where's your coat? And he said, well, I forgot the old one at the house. And this guy at a gas station was literally freezing. And I just had that coat. And he said, I would have given him my old one, but I didn't have it. So he gave him his new coat, work coat. And then he, a couple weeks later, he got him another one. But that'll stick with me for as long as I remember. Always be a giver. So anyway, if you would, please bring the offering buckets. Buckets. we got to come up with a different term, right? Baskets, baskets, receptacles. That's probably not the best word either. 
If you need an envelope, please raise your hands. Ushers are coming around. They'll give you an envelope. And then if you need to pay electronically, uh, we have an electronic giving in the back. And if you would, let's stand. Good Lord. We need to pass out some coffee before service. All right, guys, please bring your offerings forward. Thank you. said. Thank you, Lord. Shane, come back up here and pray with me, would you? That's such a good word today. Thank you. Seriously, that was very good. Shane and I were just going to set our hearts in agreement for our church, for our families. Some of you that are facing things, we're just going to set ourselves in agreement with you. We just believe God's going to turn some things around in your life. Father, we just thank you right now for your goodness. I want to thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you've placed on our life, the call that you've given us. And it's such a privilege to partner with you in all that you've called us to do. Today, Lord, as people have set their hearts to giving, we're just asking God that you'd bless that. We're going to be extravagant in two areas. We're going to be extravagant in our hospitality, and we're going to be extravagant in our giving. I'm just asking God that you would bless the hearts of these people and multiply the fruit of their hands, I pray. Lord, cause their businesses to flourish. Cause their opportunities to flourish. Lord, we just speak. Because they, they have need of things, Lord, to be equipped, to be obedient. So I just speak an equipping to take place in their life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's just so good today. Um what I feel like the Lord has placed in our heart. Um, I want to... Angie sent this to me earlier. And she said, I don't know, necessarily know that you should read it, but I can at least read a little bit of this. Um, of course, everybody knows what's... You've heard of what's happening with the Asbury College. I think it's a wonderful thing... Um, to see how God moves at different times. I've given the illustrations the fact that we don't create the wave. We're like surfers. We don't create the wave. We anticipate the wave and we position ourselves to be ready for that wave to lift us up. And that's all we can do. We crowd unto the Lord for revival in our lives and we can't create it. When you see people trying to create revival, it just doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. But God begins to sovereignly move at times throughout the country, and it's a powerful thing. And the situation that's been taking place in Asbury, I think people have come from all over the country and actually all over the world. They've come to see this wonderful thing where these young people, I think all of them under 25 years old, and the lines, I, I, they showed me a video. The lines were you know, a couple of blocks long just to get inside where people are just getting in and praising. They were praising 24 hours a day, two shifts. I mean, they'd, uh, two hour shifts. They would come on and they'd have different groups that would come. They'd be for two hours and they'd go off. But prior to doing that, they had times of, 
of prayer. They would get together for a half hour where they're just praying and seeking God before they would go on the stage, and then they would just lead. And, and the greatest thing about this was the manifest presence of God. It wasn't any flashy lights. It wasn't great musicians. It wasn't even great singers. But it's the presence of the Lord. And that's the thing that makes the difference. And this thing began and just started, and all of a sudden, it just caught fire. And, and all of a sudden, now it's reaching, not like I said, not just the country, but the whole world. And this was just one little thing somebody wrote concerning this. Uh, this was uh, someone that wrote this, said, Yesterday, I made the trip to Asbury University. I woke up with a nudge to go. So I jumped in the car, and I drove south. I'm so glad that I did. The lines were long. It took two and a half hours to get into the building, and the weather was freezing. But once I entered the room and took my seat in the balcony, I wept for an hour. The services were simple, long stretches of worship led by rotating groups of student, student teams, testimony scriptures, reading, brief exhortations, invitations to come to the altar at any time, and more worship. There was a marked humility and love for people among the seasoned campus leaders who continued to point to Jesus. The, manif the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit in the room was palatable. And while I realized that people respond in different ways to me, it was just a tangible sense of the love of God that permeated the atmosphere and overwhelmed, overwhelmed my heart. And this person said, I wept because of what I felt. I also wept because of what I saw. The Pine Tops Foundation, a Christian research organization, predicts by the year 2050 that over 40 million youth will have been disaffected from Christianity. That's over 1 million a year. And I believe that's part of what is driving the exodus that is our expression of faith has often been about everywhere. But Jesus, in many cases, in many cases, angry and isolated but Jesus and, and in many cases, angry and isolated. But there is a growing hunger to experience the authentic presence of Christ, including his heart, ways, and overwhelming presence, especially among emerging generations. A burning experience that results in burning hearts. At Asbury, the ministry teams and so many attendees, if not a majority, are 25 years and younger. And, they're lead, and, and are leading and are going as hard after the presence of God as anyone I have ever seen in 35 years of ministry. I came away encouraged that this is the beginning This is the beginning of a worldwide movement, a new Pentecost for emerging generations with the power to stem the tide of the exodus and release heaven on earth. This is the beginning of the revival and the awakening for what we have been praying. As I look at what I was seeing, I had the thought, the lion, the lion, of Judah is roaring. Thank you, Lord. On Sunday, February the 5th, the world witnessed what some considered one of, if not the most blasphemous display ever performed on the Grammy Awards. As Sam Smith and Kim Petras performed a song with demonically and sexually charged imagery. Three days later, a small group of students
Three days later, a small group of students They lingered in the presence of God after chapel in Hughes Auditorium, Kentucky. No bright lights, no cameras, no press. Only a singular desire to pursue Jesus. And what started as a small spark has grown into a fire that has the attention of the world and thousands coming from various nations to attend the gatherings. As of today, the Hastings revival has 55.4 million views on TikTok. The song performed at the Grammys was entitled Unholy. At the front of the Hughes Auditorium, above the platform, emblazoned above the pipe organs, are the word holiness unto the Lord. As I watched God ignite the hearts in the room, I was reminded of the Grammy performance and that the Asbury revival started three days later. I just sensed that Jesus speaking in my spirit, didn't you think I would, you didn't think I would be outdone, did you? The lion is roaring again and with invitation to move from what is unholy to a gracious encounter with the Savior where we experience holiness unto the Lord. Revival is not coming. Revival is here. And Jesus is inviting all of us to taste and see. Now, I, I want to say this. There's a tendency in us many times to come to church and We'll go through motions and we'll make announcements and all those things have to be done, receiving tithe and offerings, letting you know what's going on. And then you listen to a message and we search our hearts and then we go on about our day. But we need God to do something deeper in us. As a church, I, I told the praise team Thursday night, I said, Listen, I throw my agenda totally out the window. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I've heard me preach. I, that's not important. What's important is the presence of God. And I'm encouraging you. I, I just feel like I would like for us to take a few moments here today and seek after him. I'd like to do a couple of worship songs. I'd like to invite some of you to come to the front and pray. We don't talk much about coming to the altar anymore, do we? You know, somebody said, well, they don't have an altar. Well, Abraham built an altar. Sometimes you build an altar where you are. It doesn't have to be in a certain building. It doesn't have to be in a certain location. You find a place and you build an altar unto the Lord. That's what's important. But we've got places that you can come and if you want to kneel or if you want to stand or if you want to just stay where you are, you may want to even kneel at your, at your, at your chair. But I, do, I want us this morning, I want us to ask the Lord to do something in our house. Because God's doing something around the world, and I don't want to stand by and miss what God's doing. I don't want to miss it. And all we can do is ask the Lord and to seek him. And it doesn't have to be, I mean, we have incredible music. We have incredible singers. We have a wonderful place to worship. But I'm telling you, it's not, that's not all of that. What's important is, is our hearts before God yielded to him, saying, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. And I, we're going to, matter of fact, I'm going to ask you, we've even got communion. I'm going to ask some of you to come and just take communion. Maybe, maybe you've got somebody close to you that, that you love or somebody that's in need. Ask them, just say, come and take communion with me. Let's just take a few moments. I've asked uh, Aleph if he would sing this song because I feel like this initiates kind of what's in my heart. The message that is spoken from this, from this song is so very important. And what we're going to do is bring the lights down and 
I just want you to have some time that you can that you can just kind of set your heart and your focus. Let's just say, God, do it in me. God, do it in me. You know, we've got a we've got a slide that I pulled up. Would you put that up? I would like to, I'd like to show that if you could. says, with a heart of repentance, pray. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. With a heart of humility, pray. Here I am, Lord. Use me. Let me be an instrument of your glory. And with a heart of worship, I want you to pray. Your name is above every name, and I worship you alone. And I want you to take a few moments and I want you to focus on this. And I think we'll probably put the words up that Aleph's going to sing because I want you to hear what this word says. This is a this song specifically is speaking what needs to be spoken for what I'm talking about here today. And then when you finish, put that back up because I'd like for that to just stay up for a little while, just as we just as we worship. But would you just close your eyes with me for just a moment, Aleph? Would you go ahead and sing that? Rushing wind, fire of God, fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent and turn from sin, revival embers smolder in. Breath of God, fan us into flame. Cause we need a fresh wind The fragrance of heaven Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Hearts that burn with holy fear, purified in faith indeed. Refiner's fire, strengthen what remains. And so we, the church, who bear your light, lamp of flame, city bright, king in kingdom come, is what we pray. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Come on, worship the Lord. The holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out.
the fragrance of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out a holy anointing the power of your presence pour your spirit out pour your spirit out Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your voice right now. Just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Come on, can you just open your heart right there for just a moment? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel like some of you right now that are facing huge blocks in your life, roadblocks in your life, it just seems like you cannot get through it. Today, I want to just charge you to take communion. You're going to take communion. It's going to break that from off of you. That thing is going to be broken, and you're going to begin to get some traction under your feet. Maybe it's something that's been in your personal life. Maybe it's in your business. It's in, I don't know what it is, but this morning as you begin to take communion, you're going to begin to take part in what Jesus did in the, in, the, in the shed blood, in the broken body, in the covenant that we have with God. God's going to begin to break that away from you, and you're going to get some traction in your life. You're going to begin to move forward like you've not done in a long time. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, this is a time you need to do that. You need to do that. Thank you, Lord. This is your time right now. This is your time. Sing that again. of the Lord, yielding to the presence of the Lord. Come on, just yielding to the presence of the Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the Lord in this place. Elena, come here just a minute, would you? Come here. Yes, come here. I just want to speak a word over you. The Holy Spirit has had his hand on your life since you were a little girl. Preserved you, protected you in the midst of very... predictable circumstances but I want to say that God is going to cause your future to begin to take on real shape and it's not going to be associated with your past I feel like generationally the things that have been passed down have many times been considered a hindrance or a hesitation or a worry but I feel that the word for you today is consider not the former things this is a scripture neither the things of old behold I will do a new thing shall you not know it you will know it so the Lord is saying to you today don't think about the things that were the things that used to be the history behind you even the family behind you the generations that came before you that's not going to define where you're going consider not the former things neither the things of old the Lord says I will do a new thing and in this new thing, God's going to raise up a freshness in you that's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. And you're going to rise up and you're going to begin to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to have an impact on your entire house. Your, the, the generations that have gone before you, your family, and I don't know anything about your family, but I'm just telling you something. They're going to have an awakening. They're going to have a visitation of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to come and be birthed through you. The Holy Spirit is going to raise you up and you're going to begin to see some things happen. Girl, I'm telling you, you're going, to, you're going to begin to move with power and with strength in the Spirit. The Lord is going to hold you and he's going to lift you up and he's going to cause your steps to be guided by him. And I want to say this, he's going to put his word in your mouth. The word of God is going to become very crystal clear to you in such a way that you're going to have revelation of things that even aged and seasoned people do not understand. God God's going to cause the word. You're going to you're going to begin to you're going to begin to move in in the position of being a teacher of the word of God. That's what I see in you. I see a teacher, someone who can teach and speak revelation, and it's the revelation of the word of God that's going to cause the power of God to be released in your heart and in your life. It isn't going to be by persuasion. It isn't going to be by rebuke. It's going to be by the power of the word that's going to be planted in your heart that's going to have an impact on everything that went before you. So I just right now, I bless you and I declare in the name of Jesus that the power of his Holy Spirit rest upon you. Lord, I'm asking that the word of God would rise up in her heart and be strong in her heart. I release that in the name. I, I take authority over fear and worry. The enemy's trying to make you worry about things that don't even exist. I take authority over that in the name of Jesus and I say, your mind is clear. Your mind is clear and your heart is clear. You're going to begin to walk with strength and with conviction and with power. You're going to walk with purpose. You're not going to stutter step. You're not going to move with, it, with hesitation. You're not going to be intimidated by anything, but you're going to move in the power of, of, and the confidence of God's hand being upon your life. So I just release, geez, I release that in you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody say Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, just lift your hearts to the Lord. Just lift your hearts to the Lord. Lift your hearts to the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm, in the name of the Lord Jesus.
you make my heart brand new Jesus Jesus we worship only you come on sing that we worship only you we were Is there anyone that you just feel led, just drawn to, just to go put your hand on their shoulder and pray for them? Come on, let's just open our hearts for just a few moments. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. We worship Come on, Kathy, sing that again. We worship, we worship only you. You make our hearts brand Jesus. Let me just say this to you as a couple. Your problems are not going to be solved by anyone coming to fix something. And in some ways, you can't even fix yourself. But that's not unusual. None of us can. But what the Lord is saying to me for you today is that God's going to cause his word to rise up on the inside of you. And it's going to be different. I'm just telling you. God is going to cause you to have a hunger. It's going to be, it's going to be like a passion for the Word of God. You're going to begin to search diligently. You're going to begin to look and hunger. And in that hunger, you're going to find in the Word of God, God's going to be revealed, and He's going to change your situations. Not just for a quick temporary fix. You don't need just a temporary fix. You need a fix that's going to take you into the next season of your ministry and of your life. And don't you underestimate that God has called you. God has his hand upon your life. The Lord is going to use you, but what he's going to bring you to is a place where he's going to plant his word in your heart. And that seed is going to go deep into your spirit. You're going to rise up and you're going to begin to bear much fruit. You can't always judge things by the moment, but you believe in the power of the seed because God's going to cause you to begin to rise up. And it's not going to be a roller coaster. I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, I'm down. God's going to strengthen you and you're going to begin to run high. You're going to begin to run. You're going to soar like an eagle. You're going you're gonna to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and not faint. You're not going to come to the place that you say, Lord, I, I'm, 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 sometimes I just want to, I just want to go hide. 
the, the Lord is just saying to you, he's going to plant his word in you and you're going to become a student of the word of God. And you're going to begin to see what the word says and that word's going to produce life in you and that life is going to bear fruit that's going to stretch over every area of your personal relationship with each other, over your finance, over your relationships with other people. God's going to raise you up and you're going to be not just somebody's child, you're going to be someone that raises up as the adult in the room. You're going to begin to govern and you're going to begin to give oversight to sons and to daughters and you're going to bring them into the kingdom of God and the Lord is going to use you and it's going to be a powerful thing that's going to rest upon you. So I just right now, Lord, I just pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to bring power and anointing and life into their relationship, but most of all, cause your word to bring life in their spirit, man. Cause your word to raise them up and strengthen them. I pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I bless this house. I bless this house. I bless this house. I bless this house. The Lord said, make the decision in the right way. And the Lord says, I'm going to empower that decision. I won't just leave you hanging high and dry. Make the decision in the right direction and I'll empower that decision to accomplish what it was sent forth to do. And you can do that right now in the name of the Lord, making the decision, making the decision, make the decision, just make the decision. Don't, don't take just the easy way, make the decision for what is right. And the Lord said he's going to empower you to begin to run with that. The anointing is going to rest upon you. So I just bless you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, bless this family, bless these babies, bless these babies. Bless this house. Let this house be called a house of blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 We glorify. I feel like there's several of you that just need hands laid on you. I want you to get out of your seat and just come up here. We're just, listen, we're going to take just a few moments. I know this might be, this might be maybe out of the ordinary, but I want us to have a time where we can just, where we're just waiting before the Lord. We'll wait before the Lord and see what God's saying and see what God wants to do. Just ask the Holy Spirit. Would you put that screen back up there for me, please? Nothing lost, nothing misplaced. Nothing lost. Nothing, nothing. All that you've dreamed, all that you've hoped, nothing lost. There is no plan B. God's got you in his perfect plan and perfect order. And your eye hasn't begun to see what he's going to provide through you. And the anointing is going to rest upon you in every area of your life, in your ministry, in your preaching, in your teaching, in your communication. Fresh oil, Lord, fresh anointing to rest upon her. Beverly, this day in the name of the Lord Jesus, you're going to go to another level of ministry. Another level of ministry. It's going to be something that man can't do, you can't do, but the Holy Spirit. The Bible said promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but it's God that sets up one and he puts down another. And I just release that in you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I release that in you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. A new level of ministry, a new level of understanding, a new level of revelation. You're going to see the big picture and you're going to realize nothing is lost. Nothing has been lost. The timetable of God is working in your behalf. God's bringing you to the fullness of your time. He's going to release it in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It's going to be great signs and wonders and miracles begin to flow through you. I want you to begin to set your heart to begin to believe for miracles. 
You're going to wade into the very darkest of places, and you're going to grab people that are hopeless, and you're going to see the hand of God move through your life, and you're going to see things change. And it isn't just going to be a physical thing that changes in people's lives, but their emotions, their their their, their everything about them that has collapsed. God's going to cause miracles to take place. And he's going to raise you up for it in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're going to be powerful. You're going to be powerful flowing in the Holy Ghost. You're going to be powerful flowing in the Holy Ghost. You've had it before, but you ain't had it like you're going to have it. So I just release that. I release that in you in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Sometimes God has to break things away from us to be able to bring things out of us. That's what he's done. He's broken it away, and now he's going to bring it out. So I just release that in you in the name of the Lord Jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, God. name of Jesus. For I never want to go back to my old life anymore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus.
right now. The Holy Spirit's doing a work in you. It's happening right now. The Lord's doing something right now. The Lord's doing something right now. Don't say the time is coming. The Lord's doing something right now. This is your time. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your moment. Like the woman with the issue of blood, there was a moment there when she said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. She touched him, and when she did, when she did, virtue went from him, and she felt in her body that she was made whole. That was a moment of exchange. This is going to be your moment of exchange right now. <laughs> this is your moment of exchange. Your faith has made you whole. I speak that over you right now in the name. <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every weight is broken from off of you. Every weight is broken from off of you right now. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Just receive. Just receive. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Just receive. Just receive. This is your moment. <laughs> this is your moment. This is your moment. <sighs> From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. That's it. Receive, 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 <laughs> receive, receive. Oh, come on, just receive, receive, receive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. More. That's it. More. You're not done. You're not done. More. 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 Deep work. A deep work. A deep work. <laughs> a deep work <laughs> more Jesus name <laughs> yes more Holy Spirit Holy Spirit more spill out from you. People around you, loved ones, kids, family, they're about to have an overflow, a spillover. The Holy Spirit is going to touch them. In Jesus' name, <laughs> in Jesus' name, what men call impossible, God says they know such thing. I invoke the kingdom of God right now in your life in the name of Jesus. Crown of your head right now to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just, well, you're not done yet. Don't go off. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 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 Teresa, let me just say this while I've got you here.
the word of the Lord comes to me that says, whatever you see, I'm going to give you. So the challenge is, is what you see. And the Lord's going to cause the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. Because the Bible speaks about that. He said that he calls the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, that we might comprehend with all the saints the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of God, to know the love of God that passes knowledge. But that happens as our eyes are illuminated. The Lord is going to illuminate your eyes. You're going to see it. And you're just going, it's just going to be the most natural thing. You're going to walk toward it. You're going to step into the next realm. You're going to step in the next realm of leadership. You're going to step in the next realm of who you are. You're going to step in the next realm of your spiritual experience. You're going to find the Lord. You're going to find spiritual giftings operating in you that you never dreamed about before. And you're going to see it. And it's just almost like you're not going to be afraid of it. You're just going to walk right into it. And just as you walk into it, it's going to fit you just like a glove. You won't struggle with it. You won't worry about it. But the Lord is going to cause this thing just to become illuminated in you. And you're just going to know. You're just going to know. It's going to fit. It's going to be right. So, oh Lord, I just bless her right now. I just bless her. It's another level of seeing. It's going to affect you in your family. It's going to affect you in your business. It's going to affect you in your spiritual life. You're going to carry yourself on a higher level than you've ever seen. You haven't seen it before. You haven't seen it before. But the Lord's going to cause your eyes to be illuminated. And you're going to see it because you hungered for it. And because you ask for it. And God says, I'm going to cause that to happen. And it's going to be a thing of power in your life. In the name of Jesus. And Teresa, I want you just to stand here with her, if you would, for just a moment. Because that's going to be also one of your greatest gifts. Is the ability just to sit and minister to others. So I just right now, Lord, just do a deep work in her. God's just doing something right now in you, hon, that's, that's very powerful. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Can somebody say Amen. Can we just read that one more time? With a heart of repentance, pray, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. See, we're talking about asking God for revival. With a heart of humility, pray, here I am, Lord. Use me. Let me be an instrument for your glory. And with a heart of worship, I want you to pray, your name is above every name, and I worship you alone. Just for the next few moments, would you just, I want you guys just to sing one of the songs, whatever. And I just want everybody, because it really doesn't matter. The thing is, we're looking for a heart move right now. Would you just focus on that for just a moment and just pray that. Pray that for yourself. Pray that for your family. Pray that for our church. Just that we will be able to, that we'll be able to, to do that. Thank you. Father, I just bless Juanito right now. And I'm so thankful, oh God, that the Holy Spirit has touched his heart today. Doing him everything that you want to do today. Lord, I just pray that the word would find its place in his heart and that he would know you, not know religion, but would know you. Know you, Lord, I pray. And I just bless him. Juanito. Glad you came. Juanito was sitting on the back row and just gave his heart to the Lord a few moments ago. And so I'm just so glad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter where you're sitting. God can touch you right where you are. Did you know that? He can just touch you right where you are. Juanito, I'm just praying for you. I want you to get in, get in the Word, and find who the Lord is. Find who the Lord is. Get started with the Bible. Read the red and pray for power. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Lord.
Everybody sing this. I is oh, hallelujah. I exalt thee. I, I exalt thee. I exalt thee, Lord. I, I exalt thee. Thank you, Lord. 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 Ryan, God's going to do something in your body. God's going God's to touch you physically. I feel like the Lord's going to just do some inner work. I just want you to set your heart and believe God. I feel like you're going to begin to walk in a real realm of just faith toward God. Faith in His Word. But the Lord's going. To, the Lord's going to touch you physically. I just. I speak wholeness to you, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, I speak wholeness to you. Oh, I speak wholeness to you. In Jesus' name. 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 From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want everybody to stand with me for just a couple of moments. Would you just stand? We're going to sing that one more time, I exalt thee. And I want your hands to just be lifted in the, in the air. You know, this is something the Bible says, lifting up holy hands without wrath, without wrath or doubting. But I want you just to lift up your hands and worship for just a moment. We're going to sing this again. I just feel like the Holy Spirit is just going to cause something to begin to work through us and in us. I exalt thee. Hallelujah. I exalt thee. I worship you, I worship you. I exalt thee. Yes, 
I do. I want you just to pray this with me. Lord, we are, we're watching as you're moving throughout the earth. You're blowing up, up, upon the earth with your Holy Spirit. Father, at Family Worship Center here, we, I'm just saying to you, Lord, we don't want anything but you. Lord, whatever, whatever we have to do to be in line with what you've got for us, we want to do. Whatever it is, Lord, whatever you want us to be, wherever you want us to stand, whatever you want us to say, wherever you want us to go, Lord, here we are. Here we are. I'm asking God with this congregation that as you move upon this earth, that you'll usher this house right into that move with you. Move this house, Lord, into that place. Let there be a fresh anointing rest upon this place today. Lord, as we humble ourselves, as we bow our hearts before you, Lord, as we repent before you, as we have a heart of humility before you, and as we open ourselves with a heart of worship before you, we're asking, oh God, that you would do a work in our place today and let that be earmarked by your presence. Let your presence be the very thing that people experience most when they come in here. Let your presence be what people experience the most. And Lord, we're asking it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, before we change the order, would you just turn to someone next to you? Just put your hand on their shoulder and just say, God, I'm asking that you would cause a real spirit of revival to break out in them. Just, just seriously, just ask them. I don't know what they might be going through. They might be going through difficulty. You don't know what they're going through. But would you just say, Lord, in their home, in their life, I'm asking, Father, that this spirit of revival would break loose in them and in their house. I'm asking, God, that the revival doesn't just happen in the church building, but it happens in our homes. It happens in the parking lot. It happens wherever we are. God, I'm asking that you would set them free. Set them free and bring them into the place of your Holy Spirit moving in our lives, I pray. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? You know, our, our services, you know good and well, I've got something to say. But I'm willing, I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to get out of the way for God to do what he wants to do. I don't know what that's going to look like. I do not know. I don't have a clue what that's going to look like. Brother McCorkle, when we used to do the conference, he used to say to those, those that were coming in for the conference, he said, if you've been scheduled to sing, please don't be offended if you don't get to sing. And he said, if you're scheduled to preach, please don't be offended if you don't get to preach. What we want is the Spirit of God to move in this place. And all we can do is petition the Lord and position ourselves. Amen. Amen. And we got a prayer group that's going to be praying the daylights out of you over the next few weeks. I'm going to go in with the prayer ministry. I'm going to go in with the war room. And I'm going to be washing their feet here this next week. I'm going to serve them. I'm going to serve them. All 30 of them, every how many is there. But we're expecting revival to take place in this place. I'm expecting, I'm asking God, whatever you want to do, 
whatever you want to do. I'm going to ask that you please make this a matter of prayer this week and keep yourself positioned before the Lord. Don't expect us to have all the answers. We don't. All we can do is be hunger. You know, can I say this real quickly? Hunger is the currency of the Spirit. That's, that's, all, <laughs> that's all you got. All, all I can bring to the Lord is I'm hungry. See what I'm saying? I, I, I can't create. All I can do is say, Lord, I'm hungry. And if you, if you don't have a hunger, ask the Lord to put a hunger in you. Ask him to put one in you, and God will do that. Praise the Lord, because God's got a plan for this place. Wednesday night, we're going to have church. I want you to come, and I pray the spirit of revival that will just carry you on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday. On a Wednesday night that you'll stroll into the place next door and that the same presence of the Lord will be on you. And let's, let's just set our hearts that we're going to have a spirit of revival break loose in this place. Can everybody say amen? Thank you, Lord. Elijah, I want you all come on. Thank you, Lord.